Frankston was always uh, on the radar for me. It's a, it's a city in itself, and uh, I always saw Frankston as a, an emerging um, metropolis, if you like, and all its surrounding or peripheral uh, bonuses were the real draw card for me, apart from Frankston itself being the city and the hub that it is. You know, the peninsula itself is something that I love, and uh, I've always wanted a sea change, and this opportunity presented itself. Frankston is a wonderful place today um, and becoming more so tomorrow, I'm sure of that. So for those reasons, here I am. I mean, I mean, I remember the first day that I was asked to come and look at this site. I was very, very reluctant. You know, at the time I felt, oh gosh, do I want another business? Um, and uh, having made the drive that, that morning and you know, just making a couple of phone calls and talking to them. You know, I had a passenger in the car. It felt like I was just driving to the city from Camberwell, where I lived. It didn't, it didn't feel that much longer. In fact, I, I don't recall it to, to have felt long at all. Eastlink is just such a smooth, straight, simple run. And on that basis, um, I got here and I thought, well, I'm already here. So what, what the heck? This is so easy. And then I looked at the building and then I looked at the site and then I looked around and I thought, gosh, this, this place is a little bit hungry for my concept, which wasn't already here, um, albeit it might be in Mornington, but not here. So it started to make sense and the, uh, the little Lego blocks started to build up for me. Yeah, look, I've always been a, uh, a bit of a frontier um, man when it comes to restaurants. So I've, I've always gone into buildings that are new precincts that have been um, designed on paper and in many cases the vision hasn't been manifested into, into three-dimensional reality. So coming here I saw the building pretty much built and the spot was here and you know the, the sites were there and there I could see them. They weren't built but I could see them and so it made the vision quite simple for me. The, the Peninsula building, you know, this could have been any building in Frankston, if it presented itself this way, the way that it has and the way that it's come out, I probably would have still taken it if it had been 300 metres up the road or 300 metres down the road. Um, it's a nice building, it's an old building, it's a, it's, it's a beautifully built building, it's you know built like the proverbial. Um, and I thought, well, you know, it, it, it's going to be a significant building. I know what the Ds are capable of doing, everything they've done of, of late in terms of hotels and the renovations it's just you know brushed with a huge style brush in a beautiful way um, I thought well it's going to become good it's going to become a really good place and why not so the Peninsula Centre um, could have been you know the Frankston Centre and I, I would have still taken it well I've got two businesses I've got a co- what is fundamentally a coffee house of course with food and breakfast and brunch uh, that's called Coffee Head Plus Two, and that's modelled on my Coffee Head One, which is in Railway Parade in Camberwell. Uh, that particular business uh, was recently um, named as the best roaster in Melbourne for 2012 at the end of the 2012 awards in the Age uh, in the Age Awards. Um, and it is a very bespoke, handmade, uh, quality-driven breakfast and coffee house, and. I know that in a hotel, people check in, check out. First thing they need is a good cup of coffee. They like a breakfast. And I knew that the Quest Apartments were coming here so they weren't going to cook on site. So it made commercial sense for me to do Coffee Head, a coffee house, a bespoke, beautiful coffee house in the, in the style of an industrial coffee house. We also deal in a number of uh, other brand coffees. So we roast our coffee, but we also sell other people's coffees as a retail thing. The other shop the, on the right hand side, as I've taken two, is called Bar Napoli. Uh, Bar Napoli is, bar, bar's a little bit of a, a play on the Italian concept of Bar, Bar Biffy and bar, bar Naples and Bar Greco and all these fantastic well-known bars that um, have populated the great European cities. They, they call themselves bars because there's a bar in there, you know, you, you can buy a glass of wine, but there's certainly not a wine bar in the sense that we know it here in, in Australia, or particularly in Victoria. So Bar Napoli is a play on the great Italian concept of a pizza bar or pasta bar or coffee bar, 
And we are all of those things. We are a coffee bar, but we are primarily an eating house that focuses on food that uh, emanates from the city of Naples, where my mother uh, um, was born. And so me having that Italian background, I have Italian and Greek background, but that particular side of my, of my background has, has been a, a, a real influence in my life. My mum's always been the cook in the house. And so, you know, I grew up with that delicious food and always wanted to, to pay homage to that city. And so, you know, I could have called it Bar Frankston, but it probably, probably wouldn't have had the, the same ring to it when it came to pizza or pasta. So those places being the capital of pizza and pasta... Barnapoli was born, so we, we integrated a really groovy kind of uh, sort of uh, Fellini style feel, where you know, where the word Barnapoli has got a, a kind of a '60s ring to it or style to it. Um, it's a, it's an abstract version of, of the of the word Barnapoli, and it's come together really well. It's pizza, pasta, risotto, and uh, it's got a quirky kind of. Uh, Australian almost uh, like modern Australian uh, influence to it to the menu and to the style and to the people that that, that have built it and, and and run it so that's what Barn Upley is it's just a funky Melbourne version of a funky Italian bar cafe restaurant pizza bar well Frankston's going to become a place where people who live in the area won't really need to leave too often it is completely plausible that people that live nearby will never really need to venture into the city as often as they do today for, for restaurants, for, you know, for, for facilities. You know, I mean, I, I'm moving to Mount Eliza and I, I'm one by one ticking off all the things that I do in Melbourne that, that require me to go to Melbourne and that list is getting smaller and smaller. And it, it's little things like that. It's, it's, the, it's the constant evolution an upgrade of facilities and uh, amenity that allows people to stay in a region like Frankston, in a city like Frankston, for a much longer time than they ever need to. So the whole idea of travelling on, on CityLink, on, on EastLink, may not be as relevant if people find that that's a daunting task to get to Melbourne to work. There's jobs here. This was the place that I wanted to be in, and I'm still involved in businesses in Melbourne, so Frankston being a kind of a hub, it's just that much closer as well, so it it works for me, not only commercially, but geographically. So, you know, Frankston's perfect. 